Hello, and welcome back to Scalmerling Cafe and part two of the Armour Hobby Key 84 project. Starting off with the cockpit, obviously, and here I'm just bending the seat mount bulkhead, just following the instructions. Now, fitting the rudder pedals, I've actually cut off the rudder pedal. Uh, both rudder pedals actually, uh, ready for the photo etch replacements, they're on the Edward fret. But you can see here I'm having a bit of a fiddle and every now and again I'll knock it and it's because I didn't remove the uh, mounting stub properly. I did that later and fixed it. Now it's a question of adding all the bits and pieces. So the control column and one of the levers go in from underneath which I think is really innovative. Um, as you can see, it's a bit of a fiddle um, and the focus was playing around, so apologies for that. But you'll see when I actually turn it over, it sits in a little well and it replicates the real thing really nicely. And it's a really interesting and in innovative, easy for me to say, solution. I was really pleased with how that turned out. That's really cool. I wish more manufacturers would do that. There's quite a few parts that go on the cockpit floor and uh, it's a relatively simple job just to add it all. There's some photo etch stuff there as well. Some little levers and things, which is um, more of a fiddle. But uh, if you just take your time and a good set of tweezers and some decent glue, you'll be fine. Okay, so here's that uh, bent seat mount, and it just slots in from the back. And I thought it might be a bit difficult to set that angle accurately, but it actually, there's two little blocks that stick up from the floor, which the, the bit that you've bent forward at the bottom actually sits against. So that sets the angle, which is really nice. I think it's a better solution than pins and holes, to be honest. And they were just moving it against those blocks, having applied a bit of glue. And that's going to be a nice, solid, sturdy seat mount. Rudder pedals now and they've been cut off the fret and cleaned up. I did actually lose one of the um, one of the foot straps, so that was replaced with a bit of lead foil. But to be perfectly honest, having now built the airframe, you can't really see them. But, you know, it is a little bit refined. There is some photo etch for the cockpit provided by armor but I went down the Edward set as I've previously mentioned and that does dress it up quite nicely so here I'm just adding various bits and pieces some of it in fact a lot of it is actually colored so what I did is I just added the stuff that's not colored painted and you'll see me later on add all the colored stuff after that base coat has gone down Now it's up to you how much you want to put in. This is the sort of the upper decking for the cockpit. And as you can see that the actual opening is quite small. Having found some photographs online of an unrestored aeroplane or unrestored cockpit anyway, it is uh, festooned with wires and cables and such. And I was thinking of adding all that, but I did a bit of a dry fit and had a look and to be honest, it's really dark in there and you can't really see much. So I just saved the time and effort and didn't bother, to be honest. And it's entirely up to you how much of the photo etched fret you want to use. I used everything in the cockpit, uh, partly because I thought, well, I've invested in it, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to use it. And partly just to show all you nice people. Uh, exactly what it all looks like when it's done. 
This is the, uh, I think that's the canopy opening windy handle. And the actual handle was a bit of a faff actually, it kept on falling down. My super glue's getting old, so it's losing some of its initial stickiness. And it did actually fall down later, and I didn't notice until I was painting. But I just left it. There is some moulded detail that if you're going to use the photo etch, you have to remove. So that was just a simple job with a fresh scalpel blade. Just to cut that off, and I did a bit of scrapage as well. There we go, there's a scrapage. Just remove that detail, ready for the primer. So this is Mr. Surfacer 1200, thin quite down, uh, quite a bit, so it's quite thin. And that leaves a really nice layer for the paint to uh, go down onto. It's a good idea to prime if you're using lots of different materials, resin, photo etch, that kind of stuff, wire scrap plastic it will just make everything nice and uniform this is the brass in seat which is much easier to use than folding up the photo etch seat it's only a few pounds and uh, if you're going to buy anything buy that it's uh, it's a big improvement on the armor seat this is the throttle quadrant that i just glued to a bit of a pin um, that'll be snapped off afterwards and now the interior colour. So, as I said, I found some photographs of a unrestored aeroplane. And it looked like RLM 71. Very similar shade to it. I didn't have any of that. So this is MRP AMT4. Which is the Soviet olive green. With a bit of RLM 82, the dark green, added to it. And I just mixed it by eye to match the photos. And as you can see, the MRP, it goes down really nicely and to a gloss finish, which is going to make the subsequent washes much easier. No need to add a gloss varnish on this one. So on the upper decking bit, I did actually paint the bit to the rear behind because that was interior green as well. Now, you'll see me in just a second doing the uh, front decking. That should be black, and that was corrected later on. Building up thin coats, I don't want the paint pooling anywhere. I just want to gently mist it on with a relatively low air pressure so it goes on as smooth as possible. Don't want to hide any of that detail. And it worked really well, actually. I, I really like these MRP paints, Mr. Paints. They are my favourite. Onto the instrument panel. And uh, this, uh, uh, this sticky out bit was black, having looked at the picture. So I went in and that was just touched in with a brush and some ammo of MIG paint. And I did get a little bit. Um, what do you call overspray with a paintbrush? Don't know. Um, but that was uh, that was cleaned up uh, with a bit of thinner. And then it was just a question of going in with the brush, adding in all the details. Which I had to go and do again later on, and you'll see why. But it's all nicely moulded anyway, and it's it's a doddle to do this. The seat was actually natural metal looking at the photographs I had, so uh, I went back in over that. I had painted it green. This is just Alclad aluminium. Nice and shiny, and that's going to take a wash really nicely as well. That detail's very fine, but it, it does take a wash nicely, as you'll see in a bit. Headrest was leather. I think it was black leather, but I just wanted a bit of contrast. So I just went in with a brown leather colour. And actually, a lot of the levers were quite colourful. I followed the f uh, colour photographs that I found. It's a bit of a cliche, I know, painting all these knobs bright colours, but, uh, but this was real. 
And now a bit of sponge chipping. So this is just ammo steel. Uh, just applied with the sponge. It was actually quite difficult. That sponge is too big. I should have I should have had a smaller bit of sponge. Because I managed to get the top of the stick top and some of the other levers and things. Which was a bit of a pain. So uh, that's why I had to go back in and do some touching up. And I do like the sponge method. It is it is quick, it is easy, it's very refined, it's realistic, and uh, and it's my go-to really. And you can see how shiny the MRP is there. Right now for a wash. So using the ammo panel line washes, that was just touched in on the seat. This tone really complements the natural metal very nicely, actually. And then I I used it as a bit of a filter as well, just to tone down the, the that shiny metal. And obviously a different tone for the uh, all the green bits. And this is where the MRP glossiness comes into its own. You just literally touch it and using capillary action, it just gets drawn along all that detail. I could have gone in and, and done a dry brush afterwards. But do you know what? I just didn't on this one because it's really dark in there and you're not really going to see it. What you are going to see is the seat, which is why I recommend if you're going to get anything, get the brass in seat because it is only a few quid. Uh, and being natural metal in the sort of dark green pit, it's actually very prominent. So this, uh, this wash was um, allowed to dry for about, oh, how long was it now? Probably about 30 minutes, something like that, about half an hour. Which means it's dry, but it's not rock hard. And that way it's a little bit easier to blend. It, if I'm honest, it's easier to blend an, a homemade oil wash than it is the PLW, which is enamel based. But, yeah, I don't find it too much of a problem. And just to get rid of the initial excess, I just went in with a cotton bud. So you can see, actually, with this, how small this cockpit is. That's not a giant cotton bud. It's, a, it's normal sized. And I'll just go in and just get rid of the initial bit of the excess first with that. And then I'll go and refine things with the brush with a little bit of thinner and this reactivates the wash in certain places so it makes it easier to blend and manipulate and move around and I do find along some of the uh, sort of the long thin detail that you can um, you can actually sort of it's almost like drawing with a with a very fine pen along the line it's a nice technique and there you can see it finished The disadvantage of using a cotton bud like this is it can lead a few sort of errant fibres around. So they were just easily picked off with the, with the tweezers. But here we go, more blending with the brush. And I think it's quite a high contrast, but again, because it is quite dark in there, you, you kind of do need it. Right, now onto the colour photo etch. So this is a tiny little bit just down on the floor. The paint was scraped away first. Tiny dab of super glue and then just picking it up with the scalpel blade. You don't have to press too hard. You can just put it into uh, into place. So there's quite a few bits actually on the left and the right. This is a, a bit of sort of a control box and a little bit of cabling. 
the instruction is really helpful to lay out the order of which they recommend you you put that but I ignored that and went my own way and you can see the trim wheel in there as well tiny little widget on the tiny little throttle quadrant as well and just just literally just very slight pressure picking it up with the scalpel blade means you can add it really precisely it is much easier than using tweezers i've used tweezers here um obviously to add the throttle quadrant there are two holes in there i did struggle a bit actually getting that in but managed it eventually and it never ends the uh, the etch fret is really comprehensive and uh, here we are on the decking adding a few data placards And it does a good job of really dressing up this area, actually, making making it look nice and busy. Although, as you can see, it's under the kind of lip. So you don't see too much of this, but it just adds to the overall busyness of everything. Okay, nearly there now, and uh, just finish off the right-hand fuselage half. There's a few bits and bobs that go down here. You see the paint's been scraped off already. Little dab of super glue, and just touch it in place. I'm using VMS super glue here. And that's supposed to be the cockpit colour, but it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of way off. But I just left it because it's a nice bit of contrast. And there's the right hand half finished. Time to get rid of the shine. And this is VMS matte varnish. I could have used satin varnish, but actually I just thought matte might uh, might be better in the cockpit. It's going to suck all the light in anyway. And while I had it in the airbrush, I decided to airbrush the instrument panel parts. The reason I do this is because it is it is a little bit speckly from the printing process. And if you apply the matte varnish first, it does a massive job in, in getting rid of most of that. Um... It doesn't get rid of all of it, but it makes a huge improvement. But this instrument panel is kind of buried under the front anyway. You're not going to see too much of it. So that's the kind of switch box thing on the right hand side. Next, we'll lay down the uh, the actual instruments itself. Now, yes, I've used matte varnish on that, but then using the top panel, if you're very careful and apply the glue, you actually... Uh, using the uh, surface tension and meniscus can uh, can do the actual instrument glass with it as well. And there we go, there is the finished instrument panel. A little bit of um, glue splurged out, but you're not gonna see that, frankly. Seat harness, only the lap belts, which is quite handy on a Japanese aeroplane. So this had uh, this bit here had a sort of leather comfort bit, if you like. So that was just, uh, that was the one on the left-hand side. Then we'll do the one on the right-hand side. And you can see I'm actually using the lap belt as the applicator as well. Now I left that to dry for a good couple of hours, which is probably a bit of overkill, but I've had it so many times when you're trying to bend that seat harness and uh, it actually pings off. But I think because I left it for a lot longer than I normally would, it stayed in place, which is nice. Holding it down helps, actually. And then just using a bit of pressure, holding it down for a few seconds, it just holds in place.
So you can see there at the bottom, I should have mentioned this earlier actually, um, I cut off a cocktail stick and I stuck it to the bottom of the seat with super glue, which makes a really neat handle for the painting and weathering and uh, almost acts as a third hand really. And I do this a lot. And then it's a simple job when you're ready just to snap it off. It leaves a bit of a scar underneath, but you're not going to see that and it's not going to interfere when we actually glue that in, which we're going to do now. Now what I should have done is, is just where I'm applying the glue, I should have just uh, scraped the paint off. I didn't, and uh, I did knock the seat off because the um, there's not a massive gluing area, if I'm honest, but uh, it was a simple job, just add a little bit more glue and glue it back on again. And there is the finished cockpit tub, or the floor if you like. Now it's these funny mould pips underneath, um, and I wasn't sure whether they would interfere with the uh, with the wing. I don't think they do actually. You see, I'm just removing the um, the control column and the little lever mounting lugs as well. Again, used as a painting handle, but it's a simple job to snip all those off. As I said, whether that's necessary or not, I'm really not sure. But uh, but I did it anyway. Belt and braces. And then this was glued into the left-hand fuselage hearth. I had actually knocked off the um, the left-hand support mount for the instrument panel. But that was a simple job just to glue that, um, glue that back on. A little bit of the ammo extra thin. And this is the advantage of that brush. It gets right in there. And there we go. That is pretty much the finished cockpit. And it's all in place. Looks really busy in there. Now just a dry fit of the fuselage halves. Just so we can actually see what it all looks like. Make sure it's going to fit correctly when we come to glue it all, all up. And uh, we'll just uh, dry fit the, the top deck. You can see how well fitting this kit is. It's absolutely lovely. But just from that shot there, you can see um, how little of the cockpit you're going to see. So that's it. Thank you very much. That's the end of part two. And coming up in part three. We do a little bit of uh, seam sandage. We glue some wings on with the help of some clamps and pegs and things. We detail up the really rather nice engine. And we have to use an MDC beading tool. That's all coming up in the next episode. So uh, thank you very much and I'll see you then. Bye bye.